And we have the time of confession of faith. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. May we all greet one another. May we be the spiritual summits. With that, the title for today is These Men Who Have Turned the World Upside Down. Now that the summer vacation season has ended, the second half of the year's mission has begun. In reality, the second half isn't that long in terms of missions. It's three months from September to November, depending on how you look at it. Depending on how you look at it, we have to determine the outcome by the middle of November. This is because from the middle of November to December, it becomes a period of building a platform for next year's missions. With the selection and announcement of the stewards for each department within the committee as they transition into a new system, the remaining three months will determine the fruits of the missions for 2023, depending on how devoted and focused we are. What is the year of 2023? It's the year of 237 missions, the year of the 237 missions. Following the year of the church consecration in 2022, the year 2023 marks the first year of the 237 missions. This is the mission given by God. What's truly blessed is that God has given us the covenant that we will possess all the nations that will be fulfilled and promise to use us as main figures for the evangelization of the 237 nations and 5,000 people groups. Let us possess all the nations. Just thinking about these words from the covenant makes my heart beat faster and flutter. Possessing all nations, does this make sense? We who are so weak, but God had promised that He will fulfill this covenant. How thrilling is this? What is the greater reward? What do you want? Is it a billion dollars? Have it to see if you would be satisfied. Have the power if you want, knowledge, fame, have it all, and see if there is satisfaction. There is no satisfaction because true satisfaction is only within Jesus Christ. True peace, true happiness, enjoyment, it's only within the Lord. So those who are saved, possessing all the nations, that is the greatest reward. For this reward, I will go all in. Amen. This morning, upon the meeting with the elders, the elders for missions had gathered. And we were becoming one. And we were praying together for the world evangelization, 237 nations and 5,000 people groups. And they were saying, let's have devotion upon this. There is no such church. It is the greatest command of God upon the ends of the earth, proclaiming the gospel. I have been given this covenant, so I will fulfill it. May God fulfill it. If you do not have this heart, then it's that you have nothing to do with the church, nothing to do with God. The church duty, it is something that is to be thrown away in trash. God's wish is preaching the gospel until the end of the earth. If you're not interested, not interested in other people's salvation, that is a catastrophe. 
spiritually, not having anything to do with other people's salvation. And you only think about your problems. God has raised you as the 237 elders, and you have picked out the nations from the church officers, elders, remnants. 6,600 people had picked out the nations with their own hands. This is the work of the Holy Spirit. How can missions be a coincidence? It's God's ultimate command. It's the reason for the church's existence and my existence. It's to save the souls. Raising the 237 elders, remnants. You all embrace the nation. And if you look at the church bulletin, the elders are praying whether they go or not go. It doesn't matter. It's whether you have that heart or not. Having that nation in your heart. So we're also preparing for the 237 Continental Praise Conference. Through the first gathering last Sunday, people found out who belongs to the same continent, and there was a time to recognize who share the same nation. I gave an encouragement through the video that this upcoming praise competition should become a oneness festival to all believers. Everything has to start off with oneness. It's not saying who's right or wrong. That is not the work of the Holy Spirit. That has nothing to do with God. What is most important? It is oneness. Within the Lord becoming one. Let us be eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit. Why? It's that our enemy, Satan the devil, tries to break oneness no matter what. He tries to break this oneness. How persistently he attacks is emphasized by Paul when he says eager to maintain unity. Catholicism and Buddhism are so good at one, but Christianity, they can't become one. So even now, Satan is attacking in this way so that we cannot become one. So that people cannot do evangelism and missions and so that the churches won't be able to grow and close its doors. So this is what Satan is doing. So what did he say? Paul said, eager to maintain the unity. This upcoming Continental Praise competition will serve as a schedule for achieving oneness as we proceed with the full scale for 237 missions. For those who couldn't attend the first meeting, I hope you will participate in the upcoming sessions to experience the blessing of oneness for missions. Then you'll be able to receive answers of God. May you be able to enjoy this blessing of oneness. Additionally, the second half of 2023, camps will continue to take place in Canada, the Philippines, Japan, and Israel. May prayers and participation of the believers along with the covenantal challenges towards the 237 missions field continue. Today's passage contains the missions journey of Paul's team towards the evangelization of Thessalonica. Paul's team went in, and although it was a short period of three weeks, tremendous changes took place in the Thessalonica church through the evangelism camp. This is the mission's journey. The evidence of establishing the Thessalonica church, one of the representative model churches recorded in the Bible, took place. 
Regardless of how realistic the on-site transformation was, the opponents, who were Jewish religious leaders, referred to Paul's team. Jason had a few brothers as people who had turned the world upside down. The partisan of light was raised where the darkness had been deeply rooted. Like Paul's team, we must bring about changes in the field to the extent that we receive the title of people who have turned the world upside down. God has given us the time schedule for the Team of Three movement and sir for the sage. May you be within this dream. I bless in the name of the Lord that may all believers of Yawan Church become the main figures who turn the world upside down and be the main figures of evangelization of the 237 nations and 5,000 people groups following the spiritual stream of the Star 10,000 movement, 4,000 Bartizan movement, and 237 healing movement. Number one, word personalization. Verse one. After finishing their ministry in Philippi, Paul's team passed through Apollonia and Apollomus to head to Thessalonica. Thessalonica is a port city and the capital of Macedonia. Strategically, Paul entered this field. Thessalonica remains the second largest city in Greece, following Athens, which is still the capital. Even this short passage contains God's providential preparation for missions. Paul moved using the via and geatia for his journey. This road was an ancient Roman military route, and Paul had been using this road since entering Macedonia from Taurus. You might be familiar with the saying that all roads lead to Rome. The Roman Empire constructed well-maintained roads in conquered territories. This is actually the first thing that they did. And now Apostle Paul had traveled along this road for his mission journey. While the Roman Empire initially built these roads for military purposes, God transformed them for the purpose of missions. With this path, Apostle Paul was on his journey for missions. Rome had made this road for the military, but God had used it for missions. God's providential pro preparation is certain throughout Paul's mission's journey. Isn't it amazing? It's not just that. The background behind the rapid spread of Martin Luther's religious reformation included in the translation of the Bible is behind this as well. Previously, the Bible was only available in Latin, making it accessible primarily to the educated priests. So Luther translated the Bible into German, a language that ordinary people could read. I went to that site. He did this morning and night. But is translation enough? It's really surprising. It had to be made as a book distributed to people. Surprisingly, the development of printing technology had occurred even before the Religious Reformation. With advanced printing technology, the Bible could be printed and distributed, leading to its rapid spread. Why am I sharing this? It is not a coincidence. It is all part of God's missions plan. Even right now, God has given us the covenant of may all the nations be possessed. And he is preparing everything in order for us. Apart from the second half overseas mission camps, there are many places we need to go next year as well. God is continually opening doors in places like Pakistan, Malaysia, Singapore, India, Peru, Paraguay, Venezuela, and more. 
we need to just taste the blessings that God has prepared for us in the field. It's so strange. Before, these doors did not open. But upon the age of missions and upon the covenantal word of mail donations be possessed, God has opened the doors and so many people are asking us to come. I cannot leave the church empty. I don't know what to do. If I have to go to Latin America, I have to leave the church. But I believe that God has prepared all things. What's important is that the evangelism camp and missions. We only live by faith. So all we have to do is go out with the covenant because God will guide all things. There's nothing for us to worry about. Worrying itself is disbelief. May you believe in the Almighty God. What can I do? Because I don't have money. Because I, I don't have time because I'm unhealthy. It doesn't matter. All you have to do is have faith. That is evangelism camp, and that's the blessing of missions. Verses 2 to 3. When Paul arrived in Thessalonica, there was a Jewish synagogue in the city, a Jewish synagogue. Therefore, Paul followed his custom and went into the synagogue first. The expression, as was his custom, didn't mean that he did what pleased him. It means Paul set the priorities and went into the field. Simply put, the first priority of the contact point for his missions was the Jewish synagogue. The synagogue was a golden fishery and at the same time was a place of emptiness. And more importantly, in the field, Paul accurately delivered the gospel message. The gospel message. He proclaimed who Jesus Christ the Savior was for three Sabbaths, which means for three weeks, Paul preached with the scriptures explaining of its meaning. There were two core things in Paul's message. The first message was the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus Christ. For the sake of all mankind and our sins, Jesus bore the suffering, was nailed on the cross, and died for all the sin of man. However, God resurrected Jesus after three days. He was resurrected. The second message was about the declaring that Jesus is the Christ. He is the Messiah that you've been waiting for, Christ. He proclaimed why we need Christ and explained the meeting of Christ, why do we need Christ, was explained. As we do the 4,000 baptism movement and the 237 healing movement in the field, the platform for this is establishing the message. The message. Without the message establishment, neither we can influence others nor we can continue. then we cannot continue. You cannot save the people that you meet. You have to be able to give the way to salvation message. You must have the Bible verses to explain the message. Oh, but pastor, I'm so old. Oh, but pastor, I don't have the memory. If I was to give you a million dollars, try it, then you will try to memorize it within an hour. There is no one who cannot do it within the day, even if you have two digits in your IQ. It's interest. It's that earnest heart. It's that you can't memorize other people's phone numbers because you're not interested, but you are able to remember your own number. 
Therefore, having the word personalization is truly important. It is making the pulpit message to be mine. Not long ago, there was an issue surrounding the corruption in the construction industry. Due to that issue, it's called the boneless chicken department. It refers to removing all the bones from the fried chicken and just having the chicken that is boneless. Like this, when an apartment is constructed without the necessary reinforcing bars, it is called a boneless chicken apartment. At first, it might seem fine as it is made of concrete, but after a certain period, it becomes extremely dangerous to collapse, and this should never be allowed. And that's actually what's happening in China. And it's been revealed through the investigations that there are around 20 apartment complexes nationwide built in this manner. There's a reason why I'm sharing this. Just as we shouldn't become the boneless chicken believers in our walk of faith without the frame of the word, one day it will collapse without the frame of the word. One day it will collapse. One day you will fall behind. You need to have time to personalize the word to yourself, not just ended by listening to the pulpit message, but having the holy meditation time to personalize it. It's easy to do so. It's all in your cell phones. It's the time to imprint root and natured in the word. It's the word that saves the soul and life. Paul was a blabber, but he did not just blab anything. He was blabbing and proclaiming the word. If you're not able to proclaim of the word, then it's that you're not able to personalize the word. What is spiritual? Because inside you're boneless. You have no bones. You have no frames in the word. So one day you fall into trials and you're discouraged. Like a summer day, you come back and forth. You have the time to be personalized in the word. When you listen to the word, may you be able to alone, quietly, be able to wholly meditate. That is personalization. Making the word yours. You must be able to wholly meditate so that it will become yours. When the word is raised as a partisan, then you'll be able to save whoever you meet, giving them healing and making them anew. Strangely, that change will happen. I bless you in the name of the Lord that may all church believers become those who bring this kind of change, healing, and dynamic living power. Number two, spiritual paradigm shift. Verse four. When Paul intensely delivered the message, a great many of the devout Greeks and not a few of the leading women received the gospel and accepted Jesus Christ. In verse 2, it's mentioned that a lot of fruit bears within a short period of three weeks. This means that in the field, many souls are ready to be changed when we preach the gospel. The work could take place when the word is being delivered for a long period of time. But even in the short time, when there is a focused spotlight by God, great evidence is bound to arise. In one week, all has to happen. We have SNS right now, so we can be able to have communication. And even today, the pastor from Israel was sending me texts of greeting. 
And before, it's that when they leave, they cannot meet that person again. What does that mean in the field of your life, whether that is your workplace, family? No matter what field it is, if you preach the gospel, change will start and have place. Of change, there are those hidden people who are hidden. I get so many talks from missionary m i n s i k c h a n g because there are so many people who are thirsty, needing help. He comes back and forth, and he is actually sitting here, may be able to really comfort him. So people say, "Oh, it's not a mis- ministry that anyone can do. He's really healthy, even if." His hair is white. He's really healthy, and he comes and he's gonna go again. Upon the field where it's so lacking and difficult, upon the field of the ends of the earth, because he has to raise the bartizan. And it's so strange and amazing. I thought that he was a little off, but after COVID, he really changed, and his field changed. And his talent was revealed. And how can we raise the bartizan until the ends of the earth to the two, three, seven nations? Because missionary m i n s h i k Chang exists, we can raise the bartizan to half of the world. This change. Will continue to happen. So we pray for this. What is important is the spiritual heart. It's that if you really made this your will, your wish, your prayer topic, or not. Upon this short time, it's that God works, and then great works will happen and take place. It's not that we give the change due to a good deliverance of the way to salvation. How can people change due to words of people? How can we do missions with our power and skill? The change in the field cannot take place with the might of people, but by the work of the Holy Spirit. First Corinthians two four states, "My speech and my message were not possible words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power." In First Thessalonians one five, Paul confesses that he writes to the Thessalonican church because our gospel came to you. Not only in word, but also in power and the Holy Spirit with full conviction. You know what kind of men we proved to be among for you for the sake. The gospel wasn't simply delivered with just words or knowledge, but it was proclaimed to the power of the Holy Spirit with great conviction, given by the Holy Spirit. When the Lord of the Holy Spirit works, evidence arises. That we cannot even imagine. Verses five to seven. When the light of Jesus Christ was shining, the forces of darkness. Could not remain still. Satan, utilizing the Jewish people, incited people and manipulated the public opinion, like in Philippi, to falsely accuse Paul's team. What did they accuse them of? They accused Paul's team of being these men who have turned the world upside down, who were defying the decree of the Roman Emperor Caesar. However, on the other hand, 
This can also be seen as a scene that proves how powerful the gospel that Paul had preached over the three weeks was. The phrase, these men who have turned the world upside down, originally carries a negative significance. It also contains individuals who incite political negotiation and create confusion. However, in the English King James Version of the Bible, it is translated in a very vivid and spiritual way. These that have turned the world upside down. In short, it signifies creating a spiritual paradigm shift on the field. When you go to the evangelism camp, you feel it. With the message of the three onlys of the gospel and its uniqueness, they completely turn that field upside down. Can you not feel that? You go with that fun. We go and we always do what we always have done and listen to what we always have heard. But there's a spiritual paradigm shift that takes place. The spiritual paradigm shift took place through Paul's team and continued to the lives of the believers in the Thessalonican church. Through the three works of camp, the Thessalonican church believers who were raised by the who were raised by and centered on Jason were also living lives that brought about the spiritual paradigm shift. The influence was so big that in 1 Thessalonians 1 8, we can see that the news of their faith had spread everywhere. For not only has the word of the Lord so ended forth from you in Macedonia and Achaia, but your faith in God has gone forth everywhere so that we need not say anything. Our lives should also become lives that bring about the spiritual paradigm shift. Proclaiming the gospel and that news spread to all the houses. It sounded forth. There is no words to say. Proclaiming the gospel for three weeks and such changes happen. But there are some people who listen to this gospel for three decades and there are no changes that happen. There is no vision. There is no prayer topics. It's all about me, success, and all the materialistic things. People are bounded by that like non-believers. Is that so? Upon the word of Acts, your heart is not passionate and it, it does not flutter. Is that the case? Are you burning? Are you burning? Do you feel something? You must have the spiritual paradigm shift in your life. It's not being lukewarm like a person who has leprosy not feeling anything. Eddie Gibbs, an honorary professor of church growth at Fuller Theological Seminary, mentions various trends in the future ministry in this book, in this book Next Church. Among these trends, he mentions a characteristic that modern churches must embrace to thrive, which is aggressive evangelism. Just as in sports, where defense alone cannot win the game, the same thing to our walk of faith is to happen. The same thing must take place. This is what it's saying. The idea is to courageously engage in aggressive evangelism to bring about a spiritual paradigm shift in our daily lives. May all the lives of all members of Yuan Church reflect this kind of life. I hope may all the Yuan Church believers live this life. I bless you in the name of the Lord that may spiritual influence spread and continue 
and may there be an evidence to the individuals, families, regions, nations, and the 237 nations, and as well as the 5,000 people groups. This is the conclusion. In recent times, the term GOAT, GOAT, is often used in the sports world. When it is spelled out, it sounds like the word goat, the animal. However, it is used with a different meaning. GOAT stands for greatest of all time, referring to someone who is the best throughout history. In basketball, it would be Michael Jordan in Chicago Bulls. In baseball, maybe it would be Hasong. A simpler way to put it is that they are legendary or the best. In soccer, it may be Messi or Philly, who are considered as the goats. I hope that all Yewon Church believers, as Yewon Church is not one of the many, because I questioned in 15 minutes of distance, there's the pure gospel church and all the mega churches. How can I establish a church here? But he has given me the word of missions. And that's how this church has started. And then I went to a professor for missions and I asked, how can I do missions? And he had said, establish your church for missions, making it strong with its foundation. All we have to do is really do missions. I don't know what, until when I will live. I don't know and you don't know. We live day by day. What is our purpose? It's to fulfill God's ultimate command in the field. When I established the church, I prayed, God, may you be able to take my soul in the missions field. That's how I prayed when I established the church. May we be able to pray. God, upon our field, may I be legendary. So may I be able to be the goat of the sage, like the Antioch church. So I hope Yemen church believers become the goats into sharing the gospel and assigned missions, field and ministries. I'm saying this for you to be legendary. Therefore, I bless you in the name of the Lord to become all the absolute disciples of Christ who completely turns the field that is filled with darkness upside down. Let us be able to pray. Dear Father God, let us not be lukewarm, but may we be able to be like Paul's team who turns the world upside down. So may we be able to have word personalization saving the field saving the world and this nation being used for 237 nations and 5,000 people groups of the gospelization of world evangelization. May we believe in this and boldly go out having the confession of faith. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen.